Hi friends, today we're looking at the artwork of Murakami Takashi. He is a contemporary Japanese artist. I'm saying his last name first because that's traditional in Japan. Murakami's artworks are a blend of traditional Japanese art style, manga, and anime. He has become popular and well known for his super flat drawings and paintings and sculptures of smiling flowers and characters that he has created. Murakami is also not afraid to try new things. He has created many paintings, sculptures, as well as digital art. His artwork has even been featured on handbags and clothing. Murakami Takashi was born in 1962 in Tokyo, Japan. He went to school for art and earned several degrees. His artwork is what some would call colorful and cute and even psychedelic. Here we see some of Murakami's large scale sculptures. His work is exhibited all over the world for viewers to enjoy. Let's create artwork like Murakami Takashi. Hi friends, today I'm gonna to show you how to create flowers in the style of Japanese artist Takashi Murakami. Um, these are some examples of his flowers and what I noticed is that one of the flowers that he does looks a lot like a color wheel. So what we are going to do is we're going to create a flower that has 12 petals so that we can mix the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and make all of the colors on this color wheel. Something I like for my artists to know before they go to middle school is how to take the primary colors and mix secondary colors and also how to take the primaries and secondaries and make intermediate or tertiary colors, which are the colors that you see in these triangles. So enough about the color wheel. We will worry about that next time, but today we are going to focus on drawing. So on the back of this page, there are steps that I have for you that show you one, two, three, four, how to create a flower. We also have a circle template. I'm gonna take this circle and I'm gonna place it either in the middle of my paper or I could go over to the left a little or over to the right a little, but I don't wanna to get too close to the edge of my paper or I won't have room for all those petals. So I'm just gonna go right in the middle just to be sure that I have enough room. I can use anything that's the shape of a circle. This is about the right size. Looks kind of like the lid to a can of Pringles. This is actually a Petri dish from the science lab that has never been used. All right, so I'm gonna take my pencil I make my circle. That's going to give me a good base. Now I'm going to draw these four lines that look kind of like a scope. If you've ever been hunting, you might have looked through a scope before. The lines don't have to be perfect. You do need to draw lightly so that if you mess up, you can erase. And then for this second portion, you need two lines in between the top and the side lines here. So I'm just going to put little marks to kind of give me a guideline of where to go. And then I'm going to create some lines. I am drawing a little darker so that you can see on the camera better, but I would draw way lighter than this if it wasn't for that. All right, now I'm going to connect for step number three. I'm going to connect each one of these lines with a curvy line. Make sure it curves. If you just go straight, it's not going to look like a flower. This helps me make my petals. And then I can put any expression that I want for the face. I put some different examples of emojis or expressions on this sheet, but you can pick whatever you would like. Takashi Murakami, his eyes on his flowers slant inward a little bit and they're ovals. So you could do that if you want to. I'm gonna change up how I do the inside of the eyes. Also, when he does the smile, the upper part of the smile curves. So that is something distinct about his artwork as well. All right, now I'm done with this center flower. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take a paint stick and I'm actually gonna trace everything but the face. The face is a little bit too small for a paint stick. Paint sticks are pretty thick. So I'm gonna grab the paint stick. I hold the paint stick on its side because that gives me a little bit of a thinner line. 
You can go over it multiple times. It's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. All right, I do wanna show you something on the back of my paper. So if I hold the paint stick straight up, just like you see here, it's gonna give you a very thick line. If I hold the paint stick on its side, I'm gonna get a thin line. So you can use it either way you like. But for this project, you probably wanna tilt it a little bit and get kind of a thin line. All right, so what about all this empty space? I can do some really fun things here. You could do more flowers. Um, you can um, use a Sharpie to trace the inside of here. I wanna show you how to do some overlapping. So I'm gonna draw just another circle right here. And then you can follow the instructions I give you here to make 12 petals, um, or you could wing it and just do lines like this. I'm gonna make it a little bit longer because I wanna have some overlapping. And then you can connect those. Okay, all right, so not only do I have overlapping with the large flower and the smaller flower, but I also went off the edge of the page, which gives the illusion that your artwork is larger than it actually is. So then what I can do is I can just continue to draw these flowers um, wherever I like. Some artists have chosen to do other things, um, put other little extra things in the background, that's fine too. I would like for you to have at least five flowers though. And you're gonna be able to paint these other flowers besides the color wheel with any kind of color scheme that you would like. You could do warm colors, cool colors, an AB pattern, whatever you'd like to do. Um, you could pick different expressions. Maybe you've been feeling a lot of emotions lately. Um, sometimes I feel sad, so I'm gonna put a sad face here. Sometimes when people do silly things, I'm like, really? Did you just do that or say that? I can't believe it.